Medical Officer's Log, start date 2011 Dr. Harold McJoy reporting. I'm concerned about the captain. He's showing signs of increased tension and emotional stress. And I can find no reason for the captain's behavior, except possibly that we've been on a mission for too long without rest or relaxation. He's resisted all attempts to run a psychological profile on him. Captain, we've reached the abnormal. Mr. Tukok, run a scan and report. I just did that, Captain. That was the past, Mr. Tukok. I'm concerned about the present. Or is it becoming too difficult for you to comply with orders? No, Captain. Complying with orders. What's wrong, Jim? Nothing, Doctor. Poodoo, I know when something's bugging you. Don't you have something better to do? I'm doing something now, Jim. I'm checking on one of my patients. Who's that, Doctor? You, Jim. Why don't you go past the engineer Montgomery? I believe he is due for a physical. As previously stated, it is a level 5 dimensional rip in the fabric of space-time. And you are sure that we caused it? Yes, Captain. The rip is emanating frequency radiation that matches our temporal wave signature. Damn, this is a mess. Mr. Dwarf, I want a meeting of the senior staff in two minutes. Yes, Captain. Mr. Medikoff, bring us to three million kilometers, then hold position. It would be my pleasure. You have the con, Mr. Medikoff. The Baggerverse. Space. Time. So boring. An adventure is what I need. Let's see what mischief is out there. Out there. <laughs> Space Quest, Timeline Zero, Volume One, Starring Chrissy Talon Sage, <laughs> Caroline St. <Saint> Pete, <laughs> Diana Kennedy, <laughs> and John LeBay. Special guest appearances by Kareem C. Cronflay and Andrea DiGiglio. Mr. Tukok, do you have a theory on how the rip occurred? That's the curious thing, Captain. There appears to be no cause beyond our temporal wave signature. That doesn't make sense. We've traveled through time before. More analysis is needed. Monty, what is the status in engineering? Everything's fine, Captain, except for the waste disposal unit. It's backed up again. Harry, that suit is becoming a problem. I was just disposing of the biocontainment suit. Well, you don't flush it down the toilet, Doctor. That is against all regulations. How am I supposed to know? I'm a doctor, not a plumber. Captain, I suggest we focus on the rip. What is the extent of the tab? Unable to ascertain the full scope without further readings, logic suggests that a rip in the fabric of space-time would affect all timelines and dimensions equally. What does that mean in English? Each timeline, realm, or dimension affected would slowly bleed into each other, like bodies of water that run together in a constant ebb and flow. We've probably seen that already. Mr. Dwarf, send a Class 2 probe into the rip. Yes, Captain. I recommend we do not make another attempt at time warp. Recommendation noted. Damn it, Jim. I told you not to mess with the space-time continuum. Your excuse, Doctor. Whatever. Mr. Tukok, you and Engineer Montgomery begin working on a solution. We will need access to the power reserves. And a wee bit more if I can find it. Get her done. Captain to the bridge. Report! We're being hit by some kind of energy wave! Mr. Tukok, scanning. Out of hold, 75% tolerance and rise. Ray shield. Fascinating. Let's hit it. We appear to be in some kind of multi-dimensional time loop. Mr. Medikoff, full power to the engine. You got to get No effect, Captain. Mr. Metadata, hail engine inning. Engineer Montgomery on the line, sir. Monty, can you give me more power to the engines? No way, Captain! What about more shields? Aye! Make it so. Mr. Medikoff, turn us into the way. Engage! That's all we can give you, Captain! Hang on. Shields out of 45%. I have readings from the probe, Captain. I was hoping you would. These waves are emanating from the tear. They are ripples in space-time. What we are experiencing should pass momentarily. Right again, Mr. Tukok. Damage report. Shields down to 18%. Minor damage to the outer hull. Engineer on the line, Captain. Go ahead, Monty. Whatever it was, Captain, 
It destabilized the molecule frequency from a moment to moment basis. We don't want to be doing that again. It's not like we planned it, Monty. Prickard out. That was fun. Make joy to the bridge. What is it, Harry? We're a little busy right now. Can you keep the bumps to a minimum, Jim? We're doing the best we can, Doctor. I have additional data, Captain. Harry, I'll get back to you. Don't you hang up on me, Jim. Jim, son of a Vulcan. Now look, what well, if my day isn't ruined enough? Make joy to the bridge. What is it, Harry? Oh, we're in big trouble, Jim. Could you be more specific, Doctor? The toilet's backing up again, Jim. Harry. I'm busy. Well, I gotta go, Jim. What am I gonna do? Come up to the bridge and use the toilet in my ready room. I don't know, Jim. I'm more comfortable on my own, if you know what I mean. Damn it, Harry. Don't make me give you a direct order. Fine, Jim. I'll be there in a minute. Make joy out. Go ahead, Mr. Tucock. I have some interesting readings, Captain. Let's hit it, Mr. Tucock. The effects of the phenomenon are multiplying exponentially. Layman's terms, Mr. Tucock. I detect no less than seven alternative timeline intersects and one dimensional rip, all centered around a planet, which I suspect is Earth. You're unable to confirm? That's affirmative, Captain. There are voids in time encircling the planet, disrupting our sensor readings, and we caused this. More precisely, Captain, I surmise this is a result of a causality loop. Can you determine the dates of these intersects? No, Captain. Probe data is inconclusive. All right, I'm on the bridge, Jim. Damn, Harry. Oh, sorry, Jim. Hurry up. Use the little boy's room. I'll be right back, Jim. Engineer Montgomery on the line for you, sir. Go ahead, Monty. We may be able to seal the ruptures, Captain. If we could generate a quantum frequency burst. Fascinating. The resulting pulse could be enough to contain the breach, Captain. Mr. Tucock, calculating, Captain. It is possible, Captain. Make it so. Aye! What could we have done to cause this? Unknown, Captain, but I suspect the answer is on the planet. Prepare an away mission. Aye, Captain. Mr. Metadata, hail engineering. Aye, sir. Alright, I'm done, Jim. Engineer Montgomery on the line, sir. Monty, I'm leaving you in charge of the ship. Focus your efforts on sealing the rip. Aye, Captain! What's going on, Jim? Feel like joining the away mission? Well, if you're giving me a choice, I'm not. Hattie, you're with me. Damn it, Jim. I've got a bad feeling about this. Don't get all Star Wars on me, Hattie. We'll be fine. Like the time on Sextus 3, when the lizard lady gave you the Klingon clap? Or fine when Nurse Chapdass was eaten by the lesbianic probe? What's your point, Hattie? I'm just saying, maybe we shouldn't rush into anything. I've modified the Majesty suits to compensate for any temporal displacement. Good work. Harry, remember, these are not biocontainment suits. They aren't designed for accidents. Don't give me a reason to shard myself, and I won't. No promises. That's what I thought. Gentlemen, this is a dangerous mission. Be on your guard. Mr. Chang, energize. Prickard to away team. Tukok here, Captain. Where the hell are you? I'm lost. Apparently, Captain, we're lost as well. What do you mean you're lost? Jim, this is all your fault. What? That was Dr. McJoy, Captain. Put him on. Doctor? Jim, I could be home retired, but you got me lost in who knows what reality. Forget it, Harry. Give me back Mr. Tukok. Whatever, Jim. Tukok here, Captain. Any explanations as to why we've been to different locations? Not at the moment, Captain. Can you triangulate our position? Negative. Too much temporal interference. Proceed with the mission. I'll attempt to contact the ship. To cock out. What do we do now? My endeavors are to focus on locating the source of the temporal disruption. I suggest you do the same. Don't give me any of your techno babble. I'm a doctor, not a GPS. Curious. What's curious? If my readings are correct, we'll be experiencing a time surge in the next five seconds. The hell is a time surge? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Never mind. Scanning. 
I know I'm not going to like the answer, but I never like the answer. Curious. What happened? If my readings are correct, we have phased back to the year 2015. How in the blasted matrix are we going to find Jim? If I may be so bold, I believe we're occupying the same location as the captain, just in different moments in time. There goes the space-time continuum. I'm detecting four life signs approaching. We can't allow them to see us. I'm well aware of that, Doctor. I suggest we use the Majesty Cloak. What about the physical effects? Do you have a better suggestion? First time you ask me for anything, and it's a time like this. Would you prefer to hide? I'm a doctor, not a wife who cheats on her husband. Sexist doctor. Whatever. Engaging cloak. Stay down, guys. Not much further, man. This rain is messing up my head. Not far. Just beyond the fence. You mean we're heading into the old airport? We're never going to make it. We'll just lay low until they Intrigue. leave. Intrigue. I sure wish I had a beer. I was hit when you say that. On. I hope you know what you're doing. The only thing I know for sure is that we've got to get from here to there without being noticed. That's impossible. It does seem pretty risky. Just stay calm, everybody. I'm so very scared. Keep it down. Looks like it's leaving. Hush, boy. Disengaging cloak. I have a bearing on the source of the temporal disruption. Well, what the hell are we waiting for? This way. Computer, open new project. Hello, dear. Input current temporal phenomenon. What are we designing today? A quantum frequency delivery system. Quantum frequency? Oh my G port loves when we frequently play quantum physics. Let me unzip the problem. Calculating. Initial design features are rendering. Erecting unit. Complete. Run simulation. Beginning simulation. Complete. 63.5% chance of failure. Hey, that's well short. That's what she said. Threshold tolerance unachievable with current unit of measurement. Look for alternatives. Okay, Big Daddy. It's scotch time. Cheers. Regard the space quest. Monty, can you hear me? We were transported to different locations. Do you copy? Monty, are you there? Monty, uh... Something is approaching. If you don't answer, Monty, I won't put you in charge next time. Who is speaking? I am the Keeper of this Dominion. The, the real burning question that is sparking my flame is... Who are you? I'm Captain James Picard of the Starship Space Quest. I don't, don't seem to recall within your soul. You said it's a thing. Impossible. Curious. How in blazes did you get here? I believe it was a transporter malfunction. Malfunction, you say? Performance issues leave most mortal men morose. But you, my little kobold, your arrival has ignited my curiosity. Is this Earth? Earth? <laughs> no, silly. You're going to be so surprised when you realize where you found yourself. And without having to play the whole game show thing, which is so Old Testament. Just saying. <laughs> Game show. You know, I'm scorching with so many questions. The most flagrant being, why are you here? We were investigating a temporal anomaly surrounding a planet we assumed was Earth. But instead, I found myself here. And I'm quite curious as to where here is. We? My shipmates. My friends. Ooh, I have to admit, I'm feeling a little warm down below right now. <laughs> and uh, where are your companions now? I'm not compelled to divulge that information. Aww. 
I'm sure with a little kindling, I could stoke it out of you. Unlikely. He exhausts me. Let me consume his soul. What's your rush? We never have visitors. Show yourself. As you wish. Does this appearance suit you? Who are you? What is this place? She is the Queen God. Ruler of the Fire Dimension. Now, kneel before her. Do you mind? I was going to have an epic monologue about how I came into power. Until you two smothered my flames. I told you to let her have her fun. But you're such a courtesan for assiduity. You're incapable of letting her have her moment. Ha! That's rich coming from the malevolent mistress of Motomouth, the demon witch who kills every mortal man she possesses. Duh. My last name is Death. Just because your name is Death doesn't mean you have to act on it. Jeez, what a whore! Oh, please. You've spread yourself everywhere, so coming from you, that's a compliment. Well, I have an excuse. <laughs> I'm French. Ladies! Cool your embers! My apologies for their heated interruption. Things have a way of just lighting up when I become the subject of conversation. Now, where was I? You are about to tell me who you are. Oh, I've been called a labyrinthine of devilish personas. <laughs> Besides, meaningless avatars just smolder into ashes. Unless you have a destined will to blaze the midnight pyre. I demand you tell me who you are, and what place is this? Hmm. Don't you have a feisty little spirit? I like that. Let me take you back to the beginning. Once upon a time, my patriarch stretched out his hand, and the earth trembled at his very name. Burn, baby, burn! <laughs> he built his empire by feeding on the abundance of souls who lost their fate with destiny. Sorry, G. That's another one for me. <laughs> my time there, I waited for my moment. In the depths of the inferno, where time has no meaning and space is filled with... Uh, well, I'd hate to douse your flame with any spoilers. Some things you just have to experience for yourself. My father thought his rule would be eternal. Forever is mine! But I knew Mr. Arrogance would eventually burn himself out. <laughs> Mr. Arrogance. That's what we called him in secret. Talk about a narcissist. Everybody knows he was the, the greatest, greatest this I'm and the evilest at that. Whatever. After several dozen millennia, one's coals gets cooked out hearing that mountain of molten manure. Then came the wrestling match. That was the beginning of the end. Hell's bells! I was just about to get to that! My father, the devil he was, lost his grip on the netherworld like that. What the hell is going on around here? Despite all his fire and brimstone, his pomposity and ostentation led to one simple soul slipping from his grip. The only soul that has ever escaped a certain doom returned to the living. Shady bastard. Shady. The one soul so many of us were waiting to torment. Broken hearts who sold their souls for eternal revenge against that one man. And my daddy, the former lord of the infernal region, was outwitted by a mortal from the ghetto. He soon was overthrown, and now lost in exile. My star began to rise higher and higher, and now the throne is mine. <laughs> Tell me about this revolution. Now that story has some combustion-filled action, and I would just love to illuminate you. But my girls are thirsting for fresh souls, and it would just be a sin to deny them. Especially since you wandered in here so willingly. He's all yours. Oh,
I don't know. He didn't come out. Where are we now? Oh, don't worry. I'm here. Calculating. We'll hurry up before it happens again. Intriguing. Friday the 13th, 2017. See, I told Jim it was bad luck. What are you referring to, Doctor? Friday the 13th, the most unluckiest day in history. Really, Doctor? Superstition? I'm a doctor, not Stevie Wonder. Indeed. Fascinating. I know that's your catchphrase, but what's so fascinating? I believe the rate at which we shift through time will increase as we approach closer to the focal point. Great. I hope I don't throw up. Time is short. Hurry. What just happened? And where am I? Prick on here. Captain, we were trying to reach you. But your signal phased out of the space-time continuum. It's been a hell of an experience. We're trying to look onto you now to beam you back, Captain. But the anti-time variance makes your frequency very weak. Well, hurry up, Monty. I prefer not going back to where I was. Aye, Captain. Working on it. I must be near the focal point of the anomaly. There seems to be something phasing in and out. Can you pick it up? Aye, but it's phasing. Hang on. Something seems to be happening. We're reading an increased amount of temporal energy. Monty, it's probably a good time to beat me up. Almost got you, Captain. Captain! <laughs> Captain! I'm fine, Monty, but someone came out of the anomaly. Who is it, Captain? It's a man. Ready for transport. Two to beam up, Monty. But Captain... Just do it. <laughs> Mr. Chang, get this man to sick bay. Monty, find the others. Aye. I hope we're getting close. Another time surge is imminent. Just dandy. I'm gonna need a chiropractor after this. Scanning. When are we? November 1st, 2020. We are near. Out here. Look. From Friday the 13th to zombies. Things keep getting worse. That would be an understatement. We're never gonna get back to the ship. We have more pressing matters before us. All right. Doctor, if you will, set your communication device to 1217 gigahertz. What for? An experiment. All right, set. Now alter your positronic phase amplifier to emit a type R pulse. You want to tell me why the hell I'm doing this? Doctor, expediency is crucial. I'm a doctor, not an IT specialist. That much is certain. All right, got it. Now what? We wait. Wait for what? McJoy here. Jim, is that you? Yes, Hattie. Where's Mr. Tukov? He's standing right next to me, Jim. I just have one thing to say. Where the hell are you? Back aboard the ship. We'll get us the hell out of here. We're attempting to lock onto your signal. Please stand by. Captain, I'm detecting an incoming time surge. Jim, speed it up. Energizing. Welcome back, gentlemen. That was a close call. Must you be so emotional? Shut up. Calm down, Hattie. You're fine. I'll be fine after I get to the lavatory. You have a patient in sickbay that needs your immediate attention. Engineer, Mr. Tukok, you're with me. Report. It was a most unusual experience, Captain. I've confirmed three of the affected timeline intersects. I might have a couple more. Without complete timeline contamination points, our efforts will be insufficient in properly correcting the breach. Have a seat, gentlemen. Mission summary. We experienced time surges that propelled us back to the early 21st century. Three separate events contained within a five-year period. 2015, 2017, and 2020. Was it 2015 the year we traveled back to get the tuna? And most likely where the contamination began, Captain. 
Monty, how long before the QFP is operational? Simulations of delivery system of the QFP in progress. But no breakthrough as of yet. With the aid of Mr. Tukok, it won't take long, Captain. Then we can perform the initial test. Make it so. Mr. Tukok, are you familiar with the Earth legend of the Fire Dimension Queen God? Vaguely, Captain. If memory serves, she is the daughter of the Fallen One. Correct. If I may ask, Captain, how is that relevant? I encountered a being who claimed to be her. Most intriguing and a little bit scary. Including our current timeline in the calculations, we still lack the dates of no less than three timeline intersects. Maybe out of guess can help us with that. Medical officer's log, supplemental. After a heart-wrenching romp through the space-time continuum, I'm back on the ship where Jim has me caring for a patient that's out of time. McJoy here. How's our patient? I just got here, Jim. Hang on a second. Hurry up, Harry. We don't have time for shenanigans. I wouldn't call what I was doing a shenanigans. Never mind. Just hurry up. Hmm. His body has gone through some strange time dilation. It's the damnedest thing I've ever seen. Can you wake him? I'd advise against it. I need more time to stabilize his neurological system. You've got to not get there. No pressure or anything. You have my confidence. Prick hard out. Computer, initiate virtual medical assistant. Please state the nature of a medical condition. Neurologic temporal disorder. That sounds serious. Would you like a second opinion? No, I need you to perform a synaptic analysis, and quickly. This procedure requires the approval of the chief medical officer. Who the hell do you think you're speaking to? I wouldn't know. This is my first time. I'm the chief medical officer, you electronic fabrication. Well, you don't have to be rude. Even virtual beings have artificial feelings. I'm a doctor, not a counselor. That does not compute. It means I don't care about your feelings. Now shut up and get to work. That's what she said. Analysis complete. Readings are point zero. Seven out of sync with stabilizing. How is he? It's as if part of his consciousness hasn't fully faced back to the here and now. Wake him. Jim, that's not a good idea. Noted, doctor. Just do it. Well, you heard the captain. Are you always this grouchy? What happened to bedside manner? Computer disengage VMA. Thank you for using the virtual medical assistant. Remember to stay healthy. Goodbye. If you want to do something right, you got to do it yourself. <sighs> it's all right. You're alive. I think he knows that, Hattie. Where? Where? Where are you? Yes. You're aboard the space vessel in the future. Jim, the prime directive. It doesn't apply in this circumstance, Doctor. That's convenient. What do you remember? I'm not... I'm not sure. I remember... Floating... Darkness... Emptiness... I was... Talking to someone. Who? I... Think, man. Jim, give him time. Brickard here. We're ready to perform the test, Captain. On my way. Spatial anomaly detected. Roger, roger. Scanning. Phenomenon. Contacting the Ethereum. Roger, roger. Why are you disturbing me? Forgive me, Your Highness. We've detected a spatial anomaly. What kind of anomaly? Unknown. Dispatch the Death Destroyer. My apprentice is on board. Have them investigate and report back. Roger, roger. Prepare my ship, Commander. We shall join now. Hey, okay. Captain on the bridge. Mr. Tukok. Captain, all sections report ready. What can we expect? This test should provide us details on the energy output needed to effectively repair the tear. Simulation suggests less than a 50% chance of restoration. Very well. Monty, we're ready. All set down here, Captain. Proceed. Mr. Medikoff, raise shields. 
Mr. Dwarf, charge the pulse. Here goes nothing. Point your fire to be continued. 